Hello and welcome to the third week of the Coach's Corner, brought to you by, brought to you by Monty's and KMBU TV. And we are here with head Baker football coach Mike Grossner, the Wildcats end this week with a 48 to 17 win over the Evangel Crusaders. And that now pushes them to a 3-0 record. First off, Coach Grossner, just talk to us a little bit about this game and how do you feel the Wildcats fared against the Crusaders? Well, I thought a uh, big game for us at home, home opener, and our kids were focused. We had a great week of practice, and I think uh, going into about 48-hour 48, 48 preparation, our guys got themselves mentally ready. Uh, we took the opening drive and, and wanted the football and took it right down the field offensively, and I think that gave us a big boost to get up 7 nothing on a, on a very talented football team. Now, that first game is always a big one. How do you feel about the atmosphere coming into the home opener? I thought it was a great home crowd. I mean, you know, on a Saturday night at 6, you know, there's a lot of hustle and bustle in Baldwin City. So uh, people made a choice to come out to the stadium and watch our football team. And I think they got a good show. Our guys uh, put out a good product and, and played 60 minutes of hard football. And uh, I thought it was an exciting game. Now your first drive, you go 14 plays for 77 yards. It was capped off by a Jesse Schultz one-yard touchdown run. Walk us through that drive. Yeah, I thought we had a few third, third down conversions, which were big. Uh, they, they were a team that wanted to blitz against us, and our quarterback, Sam Boston, had a couple checks and got us into some shallow tight pass routes where he was going to get man coverage and hit the guy on the run, and we converted, I think, three third downs on that. And then we got down in the red zone, and uh, we are on about six-yard line, pounded it down to about the two or one on third down. And Coach Regalado decided to give it to Jesse Schultz uh, three in a row, I believe. And on the third one, he was getting stuck in the hole a little bit. And on the third one, he left his feet and dove over. And it was a great run because uh, they were diving low. And he went over the top and scored for us on fourth and one. Now, you mentioned Sam Vossen. He was 18 for 27 this week, 241 yards with three touchdowns. Talk about his development so far. It, you know, I, I think I said it last week. Sam's a very bright individual. Uh, and he, he understands our offense and he understands what we need to do and be efficient. Uh, you know, he's, he's just been efficient with the football. He started a little bit, a couple throws. If he had them back, I think he would have had a couple on the run for TDs in that first drive. But then he settled down and he hit some big throws. He hit some great crossing routes on third down. And then, you know, our run game was going well enough that he was able to make it out of there and throw on the run and hit some guys for some key first downs. Uh, we're, we're, we're ecstatic with how, how he's playing for us. And, uh, you know, three touchdowns with no interceptions, that's a good game. Well, that wasn't the only spark for the Wildcats. Jermaine Broomfield was also awesome for the Cats. 17 carries, 90 yards, and two touchdowns. Now talk a little bit about Jermaine and uh, that transition of him taking over the number one running back spot this week. Yeah, uh, you know, we go into the game with one guy healthy. And Jermaine knew it, and he, you know, he had a red shirt on all week, which meant don't hit him, stay away from him. And, and there were two reasons there. We got one guy that's, that can get to the Saturday game for us and, and be healthy, and number two, he had a little ankle sprain on top of that. So I thought he ran tough, and once he got into the second, third level, he got to the end zone. And, and Jermaine's a tough, tough kid. He understands his role on our football team and what's expected, and uh, we're, we're excited to have him. Now you had eight players touch the ball yesterday for 201 yards rushing on the ground. When you come in and only have one running back like that, what are the adjustments you have to make it to get other guys involved? Well, I think we've got a lot of speed in our offense. You know, we got Kyle Bolton on the outside that when he touches the ball and those reverses and sweeps and, you know, sometimes we can get him in a shotgun formation and, and run some wildcat formation as well. But we've got him with great speed. Uh, you know, we've got a couple receivers on the outside that we'd like to get the ball to. Dylan Perry's another guy that we can hand the ball to. You know, he was a quarterback in high school. So I think coaches are doing a great job of scheming. Uh, we're blocking great up front as an offensive unit. And then if we can get these guys on the perimeter with the ball in their hand one-on-one, -on -one, uh, they're able to break tackles and score. Now for our last look at the offense, a couple weeks ago you told me that Jake Morris was rehabbing and hoping to come back at some point this season. As of now, what is his update? Well, you know, the doctors have cleared him to try to practice. That's an injury that I don't think many people have ever played on, you know. So he's going to put a knee brace on, see if he can do it. If there's any problems, I don't think he'll continue. 
Uh, you know, Sam got a little banged up this week. Jake's walking around with uh, a knee brace on. Uh, you know, Dylan Baxter's got an ankle and a foot. Uh, Dylan Perry's another guy that's played quarterback. Nick Morrow we're trying to get back. Uh, Jake Keller came out of retirement from the quarterback position. He's been playing wide receiver and went one for one uh, for nine yards on a, on a big play in the fourth quarter. So uh, we're just doing it with whoever's available. And right now it's, it's working and we're, we're going to go week to week and, and, you know, whoever lines up behind center is going to get it done for this team. Well, that was a look at the Baker Wildcat offense. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about the defense. But before we do, just a reminder, we are here live at Monty's Seafood and Barbecue down at 711 High Street. 25% of the proceeds will go back to the Baker University football team and also KMU TV. We'll be right back to talk about the defense. Exciting. Comforting. Innovating. I don't always listen to the radio, but when I do, I listen to KMBU 89.7 FM. Baldwin City's number one radio station. Everything you need to know about what's going on at Baker University. Get your Baker Orange right here, folks. And welcome back. And welcome back to the Coach's Corner with head coach Mike Grossner. Now, Coach, we talked about the offense, and with 48 points in one game, there was obviously a great offensive effort, but a lot of this credit goes back to the defense. Four interceptions yesterday and uh, two sacks. Tell us a little bit about this group. You've got to be amazed with where they stand right now. Yeah, I love our defense. I love the way they're running to the football. Uh, you know, up front, I thought yesterday that, that we got off the football very well, which you asked your D-line to have a great get off, and that puts a lot of pressure. They had a young offensive line. Our D-ends were, were, were meeting at the pass at the quarterback. Mike Faison played great inside. And then we were able to rotate three or four guys in there to keep them fresh. When you put pressure on the quarterback like we did, the ball's going to be tipped in the air at times. I think we got one tip from the D-line that was an interception by Adam Steele. We got a tip in the secondary that Preston Shank uh, took almost back to the house. But we ended up with four picks in all. When you're, when you're creating turnovers like that, you get the team excited. Offensively, we get great field position and we scored. Now, Ryder Wirtz came back onto the field for you guys this week. Talk a little bit about the changes that happened with him coming back onto the field. You know, Ryder's our le leader on the defense. He's, he, he plays with a lot of emotion. Uh, he was chomping at the bit to get back. It, it, it hurt, you know, going into his senior year. He wants to play every ball game every minute. And, you know, last week, Adam still stepped in. Adrian moved down, and we didn't miss a beat. But having Ryder in the middle, allowed us to play Steele and Adrian back in their normal position. And I, and I felt like, uh, you know, against the pass, I felt like our linebackers were getting great depth and, and wreaking havoc over the middle. They like to throw the dig route to number 14, and they weren't very su successful yesterday doing that. Now, the defensive line was on point yesterday. Talk a little bit about the game plan leading up uh, to this game against the Crusaders. We kind of put the challenge to our O-line and our D-line. I felt like as a staff, we felt that that was where we were going to win a football game. And I think both sides, both the O-line and D-line, did a great job. Our D-line, uh, we're able to get a four-man pass rush. And when you can do that, you can play some games on the second and third level. And I think it's allowing our corner, our two corners play pretty good man defense. But when we drop into a zone, we're protecting those safeties back there, 
And heck, Preston, you know, being a rookie safety back there, he's got three picks for us. Now you guys had four defensive ends yesterday. They got quite a bit of playing time. Talk about the threats that uh, the, all four of those guys have that makes you guys uh, have such a great rush, rush. Yeah, you got Andre Jolly, who's a threat against the pass and is playing against the run very well. You know, what I like about him is he's getting off blocks and running sideline to sideline. Then you got uh, Jesse Campbell on the one edge. It's, you know, he's inexperienced, but, but he's strong and can really run. And then you throw in Mario Armstrong, who's just plays both well against the pass and run, especially the run. And then you got a Scott Stigger that can come in there and get after you, and a Ben Siebert that can get after you. So we, we, uh, we've got some talent in young men, you know, and then we plug in those big guys on the inside. So we can give you a couple threats. If you're going to try to run the ball on us, we're going we're gonna to stop it with some bigger bodies in there. And then if you try to drop and throw, we've got some speed out there. Now, two guys that we haven't talked a lot about this year is Josh Fairley and Mike Stevenson. Mike got an interception last night, and they kind of give you guys a real sturdy edge there on the defense. Is there a weak spot on this defense right now? I wouldn't say we have any weak spots. They play well together. Coach Thorne prepares them well. Coach Brock does a great job. Uh, I think they like each other. There's great team chemistry. Uh, Mike Stevenson, we know he's a great football player. I'm glad he got off the schneid, got a ball in his hand. And, uh, and made a play for us. He's been playing solid all year. Josh Fairley's just a real smart corner, understands his ability, plays our defense fantastic, and uh, understands what needs to be done from the corner position in our defense. Well, that was a look at the Baker Wildcat defense. We're gonna take one more break, and we'll come back and have two players to talk to this week, Sam Vossen, as well as Andre Jolly. Just another reminder, we are at Monty's at 711 High Street. 25% of the proceeds go back to the Baker football team and KNBU TV. We're gonna take a break, and we will be right back with the Coach's Corner. Exciting. Comforting. Innovating. I don't always listen to the radio, but when I do, I listen to KMBU 89.7 FM. Baldwin City's number one radio station. to know about what's going on at Baker University. Get your Baker Orange right here, folks. Joined by quarterback Sam Vossen. Yesterday, Sam was 18 of 27, 241 yards, and three touchdowns through the air. Sam, you came in and had to take over in a spot that really nobody would want thrown at them. Uh, talk a little bit about the transition. You've got three wins now under your belt. How are you feeling? Uh, really good. Definitely get a little bit more confident each week. So just getting uh, more reps under my belt and practicing more, getting all the first team reps has definitely helped a lot. 
Now those 240 yards yesterday, you were able to spread those across eight receivers. Tell us a little bit about the relationship with those receivers out there. Uh, we just definitely have a really good receiving core, and it's guys who I've been with for the last couple of years, so I definitely have a lot of familiarity with all of them, so that definitely helps a lot, and I guess it's kind of showing up because I get to not just focus on one guy, and there's a lot of different options. You guys are now three weeks into the season. As far as an offense stands and as far as you stand, what, what is the focus right now going into week four? Um, just getting better every week. Um, you know, even though we played pretty good yesterday, Coach Regalado always has a lot of things that we need to improve on. Uh, so it's definitely every week we just try to improve on little things and try to just get better every week. Now we saw you take off on a boot yesterday, and we thought that we were going to see a score, maybe a Jesse Schultz jump over the line. What was going on in that play? Uh, they were definitely over pursuing a lot, uh, so we thought we might be able to sneak one past them. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't quite get to the edge, but we scored on the next play, so it was all right. Okay, now looking on into week four, team uh, Central Methodist, what can we expect to see this week? Um, I really don't know. I haven't had a chance to look at them very much yet. I'll know a lot more tomorrow, but they're always a really good team on defense and always play really hard, so I'm sure it'll be a, a good game. All right, well, Sam, thank you very much. That's going to wrap it up with the interview with Sam Boston. We're going to take a break, and we will be right back with defensive end Andre Jolly here on the Coach's Corner. <laughs> Exciting. Comforting. Innovating. I don't always listen to the radio, but when I do, I listen to KMBU 89.7 FM. Baldwin City's number one radio station. Everything you need to know about what's going on at Bacon University. Get your oh, bacon God. orange right here. And welcome back to the Coach's Corner. We are now here with defensive end Andre Jolly. Now, Andre, yesterday you had three sacks in the game against Evangel. Talk a little bit about uh, the keys that you have of getting to the quarterback. Uh, well, you know, Brad, uh, obviously I'm not a really big guy. I would be playing defensive end, so I just kind of use what I have to my advantage, and obviously that's my speed. So just uh, uh, working around corners and edges and getting on edges and uh, just making sure uh, I keep my rush uh, tight, keep the quarterback contained, and just uh, take it over from there. Now, there's been times this season where the defense has really had to step up and win the game for you guys. How much does this unit change when the offense is putting up 40-plus points a game? Uh, honestly, I just feel like our defense doesn't miss a beat. I mean, uh, having Ryder back was real nice because, uh, you know, he keeps us uh, he keeps us on tempo and just uh, making sure everyone's doing their job. And uh, we really look up to him. And, uh, yeah. Now, this defensive line that you guys have is a lot to be, you know, it's a, it's a great force. What is the tools that you guys have, you know, what makes you guys so good to get out there and rush that quarterback? Honestly, I think what uh, makes us so good is just the team chemistry uh, all of us has as a defensive line, just uh, what we grow, go through together as uh, teammates and uh, how hard we work together. Uh, guys like, you know, Austin Ham, uh, Mike Faison, uh, Jesse Campbell, and Mario. I mean, uh, we really work hard and compete and get after it. So. Uh, I think us overall just being so competitive just uh, make it makes one another better. 
Now we saw a lot of emotion from the defense yesterday and with three sacks you think that you would have seen a lot of emotion from you as well. You're not quite the celebrator like most guys are. What's the deal with that? Well, you know, I'd like I'd like to try it, but at the same time, you know, I don't know, it's just I feel like uh, you know, it's just better just, you know, to keep your mouth closed and just get back in the huddle and just go from there. All right, well, that's defensive end Andre Jolly. He had three sacks yesterday, and he leads the nation in total sacks so far this season. We're going to take one more break, and we'll be back with head coach Mike Grossner to talk about Central Methodist this upcoming week, and that will end the show. We'll be right back on the Coach's Corner here live at Monty's. Exciting. Comforting. Innovating. I don't always listen to the radio, but when I do, I listen to KMBU 89.7 FM. Baldwin City's number one radio station. Everything you need to know about what's going on at Bacon University. Get your Bacon Orange right here, folks. And we are back with the Coach's Corner with head coach Mike Grossner. Coach, you guys head back on the road this weekend. Just give us a preview of Central Methodist. Uh, you know, you got to go to Fayette. It's about a two and a half hour drive. We've had some excursions there that uh, were kind of crazy in the past, so. Uh, you know, it's one of those places that they play well at home. They get excited. They, they run a certain style of offense. Luckily, I think we face Peru State on the road. We face the triple option already this year. Uh, Central Meth runs a form of the option. They've got a nice quarterback that's senior, that's a four-year starter, that uh, the ball in his hand. He's uh, real exciting for them. They've got a nice fullback that runs the ball real hard. So. Uh, we've got quite a challenge again defensively. It's just a change of styles. We go from, you know, Ottawa that's wide open, Peru that's running triple option, to, you know, Evangel that's spreading you and throwing it long, and now we go back to the option. Well, the Wildcats will travel down to Fayette, Missouri this weekend. They play at 6 against Central Methodist, and they will return home the 22nd for another home game against Missouri Valley. Big thanks goes out to Monty's Coach Grossner, ZMR Nunez, and also Clayton Naff. And we will see you guys back here next Sunday at 6 p.m. for the Coach's Corner.